This for six to eight dollars at a stadium game? What it really should be this price right here. That is but cheaper. As I've said, a stadium hot dog is sort of a staple when you go out. It's American culture right there. We're just gonna let it be $7 with just a plain hot dog with a fart of ketchup on it. Unacceptable. Dodger dogs are a part of my life, my childhood. That being said, it should be good. So why can't we make it gourmet, homemade hot dogs, homemade everything, relish, onions, and a trio of sauce flavors all in one to make the cheapest and greatest stadium dog that there is. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Making a hot dog is an uncomplicated process. Well, not this one. Let's begin with the dog. You're first gonna start with three pounds or 1.3 kilos of pork shoulder and three pounds or 1.3 kilos of beef chuck roast. Cut that into long strips and feed them through a meat grinder. Whoa, 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 Josh, what kind of whack mm -hmm. butt cheaper is this? Hear me out, totally buy pre-ground meat, which is totally fine. But if you happen to have the $50 KitchenAid attachment, then grind it yourself. I usually grind mine twice to get it ultra fun and emulsified. From there, knead your ground meat like a fine dough till creamy looking. In a separate medium bowl, optional, Add 72 grams of sausage binder flour, totally optional, two and a half tablespoons or 24 grams of smoked paprika, two tablespoons or five grams of mustard powder, one tablespoon or five grams of coriander powder, two teaspoons or five grams of ground black pepper, two tablespoons or 40 grams of kosher salt, one tablespoon or 15 grams of light brown sugar, and last and also optional, five grams of prog powder number one. Here's a hack for you. You want to spend any money on that? Go to a local butcher that makes sausage and ask them if they can spare you just five grams of prog powder for a humble home sausage maker. Give the little whisk until combined, and then add three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of filtered ice water. Whisk that together and you got a thick spice paste. Add that to your meat mixture and mix until thoroughly combined and homogenous. Now stay with me here. I know this is uh, more expensive up front. Get some sheep casings and you'll need enough to handle about six pounds of meat here. Again, you could probably barter this also off that butcher if you don't want to pay for a full bag. Be sure to let those rest in cold water for 30 minutes prior to using them and flush them with water. Then just pop them on a, ah, forgot about this, a uh, sausage stuffer. <sighs> Same part for that $50 grinder, but if you don't have one, well, look, this is a bottleneck for most people. Get the lame store-bought hot dogs if you have to. Get your casings onto your sausage stuffer and, well, stuff your sausages till all your meat has been used. Pinch along that whole sausage to create about seven to eight inch logs, twist them each to tighten them, and repeat with the rest. This will give you a total of about 80 dogs. Yes, 80. Sure, the total price ends up here for the whole recipe, but that's for 80 god dang dogs. Now pop those in the fridge uncovered overnight to dry. Make your merry way to a quick little sweet pickle relish. First, get yourself two pounds or 900 grams of pickling cucumber, Finally chop them, do the same to half of a sweet onion, save the other half for later, and add all that to a large bowl, cover with two tablespoons or 40 grams of kosher salt, and cover with one and a half quarts or one and a half liters of water. Mix that and let that sit for 25 minutes, then drain your cukey boys through a fine mesh strainer lined with a clean hand towel or cheesecloth, wring out as much water as you can. Next, snag a medium sauce pot and add half a cup or 120 milliliters of water, one cup or 240 milliliters of white vinegar, three quarters of a cup or 128 grams of granulated sugar, and optionally two teaspoons or seven grams of mustard seeds. Bring that to a boil over medium high, reduce for eight minutes, then add your cucumber onion mix, reduce the heat to low, simmer for 10 minutes, then just pour all that into a bowl set over an ice bath and stir until chilled. Then just pour that into an airtight container and well, store in your fridge. Next, let's make your buns. This is where the real takeaway is. Combine half a cup or 125 milliliters of whole milk and half a cup or 125 milliliters of water. Heat that to 95 Fahrenheit, then whisk in two and a half teaspoons or nine grams of instant yeast till dissolved, then whisk in one egg and one egg yolk. Then in a separate bowl, magically already holding three and a half cups or 525 grams of all-purpose flour. Add four tablespoons or 50 grams of granulated sugar, one and a half teaspoons or nine grams of fine sea salt. Give that a nice little so combined, add your milky yeasties to the bowl of a stand mixer or just a large bowl. Begin mixing on low speed by machine with the dough hook attached or by hand with a fork. Add your flour a quarter at a time till all of it's been added. Then once you get a rough dough, mix and knead that for three minutes. Then add two and a half tablespoons or 35 grams of softened unsalted butter. Or if you're doing it by hand, it's a little easier with vegetable oil. It'll break up a bit and it's gonna be annoying, but just keep mixing until it comes back together and knead for another two minutes. Once it's smooth and lovely, form that into a doit ball, place in a greased bowl, cover with plastic wrap, obviously properly named. Rise at room temp for one hour or till doubled and puffed. 
Divide that into 80 gram pieces, which will get you about 11 to 12 buns. Gently roll those into light balls, and then roll them into sausage shapes about five inches long. Place them on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, and be sure to lay them side by side so that their long sides are nearly touching and spaced about a half an inch apart. Once you've done that with all your dough, cover that lightly with greased plastic wrap or another inverted baking sheet and proof for 30 minutes at room temp. Finally, brush those with egg wash consisting of one egg beaten with a splash of water and bake at 375 Fahrenheit for 15 to 18 minutes or until a lovely golden brown puffed cylinder of flavor is removed. Optionally, you can brush those with butter, but for the sake of butt cheaper, maybe don't do that and let those cool completely. Back to our dogs. You can finish these one of two ways. You can either smoke them at 250 Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes or till an internal temperature of 150 Fahrenheit is reached or you just pop them in your oven at 250 or 275 for the same amount of time. Just be sure to put them on a wire rack set over a baking Sheet. Once they're done, immediately submerge them in an ice bath to cool completely and stop the cooking process. Once they're chilled, snip them free of their meaty shackles and you have hot dogs ready to be bagged, refrigerated, frozen, or used immediately. Now we're almost there, let's just saute that other half of the onion. Grab that bad boy, dice it, get a medium sized skillet, heat up enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom of the pan, heat that over medium high, add in your onion, season to taste with salt, and sear stirring often until just softened and lightly browned. That's it, that's the onion. Now we are finally ready to assemble. Cook your hot dogs however you want, alright? Just please please don't boil them. The idea of hot dog water existing is something that haunts me every single day. Instead, you can easily just sear them in a pan that's been heated over medium high, lightly greased, plop in your dogs for two minutes, or to lightly browned, flip, and another two to three minutes on the other side. Now for your buns, carefully cut the rounded cheeks on both sides so you get two flat surfaces. Perfect for toasting. Get a large pan, heat that over medium heat, add in vegetable oil or a couple knobs of butter. Once that's hot, add your buns flat side down and toast for one to two minutes per side or until you get a stunning golden brown. Now split your buns for everyone to see. Add in one slice of cheddar or whatever cheese you got laying around. Melt that under a broiler or in my case a torch. Lay in a dog or if you want that tongue twister washing machine run on hot spin cycle double glizzy action, you can add in a second dog. Then follow that with a layer of ketchup along the whole length of that wiener, followed by mustard and most importantly, mayo. Yep, don't question me here, this is important. Now, finally, a little bit of your sweet relish, your sautéed oignon, and that is a hot dog that would be served at the stands, sitting at the glistening gates of Mount Olympus, handed directly to you from a demigod. Now, let's taste test and see if our efforts were worthwhile here. Look at that. <laughs> That's a double dog. Tell me you don't want to eat that? If I received this at a stadium, I wouldn't even want to watch the game. All I would want to do is make love to this. I don't care if there are people around me. I'm making love to it. Who was shitting on the mayo? Was that you, Kendrick? You need to come eat this. Just take a bite as you would. It's good. God, it's so good. It's not really about the mayo per se. It's more so what it creates. It's essentially a burger sauce with cheese, relish, onion, the texture of the bread, the sweetness from the bread, everything you want in a bite. And for this price right here, that's but cheaper. <laughs> you want to know what else will give you the double dog action? B-roll. Well, we got dang did it. Look at that. The takeaway here is that a hot dog is not just a hot dog. It's a piece of American culture. And if you treat it with respect instead of being so god dang lazy with it, well then it's quite the eating experience. Could you go and buy your own dogs? Of course. It only marginally increases the price, but it dramatically decreases flavor and experience that you'll be eating. So think about that next time. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bam, right out of the park, you stupid.